One, two. Okay. Yay. All right, so today we will check this empty box. But first need to do the sound check, make sure everything is okay. All right, let's go, see what's inside and hopefully have one working instrument by the end of the stream. I hope the sound is okay. Okay. It's a rather big box. So let's open up. of bubble wrap should be nice and safe so let's take it apart Another full size 19 uh, inch rack instrument. It's about twice the size of the DMM. And it was sold as a parts for repair, not working, but actually, I think there is a pretty high chance that it's actually working fine just doesn't have the as you can see there is no standard mains input it's using spade lock uh, screw terminals for input power and output power but it's not the power supply it's ac source so it's essentially programmable uh, yeah, isolated AC source uh, for uh, voltage ranges up to 300 volts that is uh, very uh, suitable for testing power supplies uh, various mains power instruments doing the stress tests and stuff like that usually these are pretty expensive uh, can cost uh, multiple thousands of dollars even if they are broken so this was kind of unexpected uh, acquisition this time so we'll see how it goes and if it's actually working or if we do need to do some repairs shape it have some dents so dents and scratches but that's not too bad it's 
all upside down. So let's put it back. So it is Chroma programmable AC source, model 61604. It's 2000 volt uh, ampere unit, pretty powerful. So uh, let me get the video. Yeah, it have the big uh, backlit display, which shows all the voltage parameters, current, power factor, stuff like that. I have the simple keypad to enter the settings, uh, quick uh, adjustment knob, uh, power switch, and that's it. There is, and the front panel is slightly bent on the corners, but a little hammer help and it will be fine. So let's see on the back, uh, it's slightly heavy, around 20, 22, 23 kilo. So on the back we can see the mains input, it accepts uh, input voltages from 90 volts to 250 volts, one phase, uh, 15 amp uh, input, and then here is the output. So you have the new line and neutral output, sense lines, uh, ground, and uh, that's pretty much it. There is an optional interface module in here. So it uh, have GPAB communication interface, RS232C, external VRF, which is very uh, handy option. You can uh, supply uh, input from uh, normal like ARP or sine wave generator and have this unit work as a power amplifier essentially. There is also power switch, enable, disable um, and uh, some trigger uh, clocks and PWM and synchronization uh, uh, inputs and outputs. These are used for synchronizing and uh, one of these units with uh, multiple uh, stack of them to generate three-phase output. So we can uh, take it apart first, see if there is any damage or burned parts inside. And if everything is okay, then we can make the custom cable for these uh, input terminals, power it on and see what happens. But first, we can take the cover off and see what's inside. For that, I'll have to reposition the camera. So we can see better, better angle. There we go. So, please let me know that the so sound and video quality is okay. So we can continue. I actually used uh, one of these units before uh, uh, it was model 61504 which is different to this one only in the uh, harmonics uh, test uh, functionality but essentially it was the same um, same type of device and it was very handy to test various switching power supplies and repair instruments uh, because you can have the uh, current limit uh, on the output. So if you have uh, instrument with a blown transformer um, or stuff like that, then you can actually trip the source and it will shut down the output without risking uh, damaging of the device under test. So it's a very handy feature. Okay, and it also to remove the 
side screws. And also from that side. I wanted to get the isolation transformer for my lab quite uh, for a long time, but never actually got to it. But this unit essentially replaces the isolation transformer and also AC source. Okay, so we have the whole bunch of boards. Okay, there is a loose screw in here. Hard to see, but it's actually a standard M3 screw. I don't know what it's doing inside. Probably somebody tried to repair it. Uh, two large 120 millimeter fans, front panel board, the whole, ha ha whole high voltage stuff is um, protected by this cover. But first, everything looks nice. TMS320 processor, some memories, this is the control board and this is the power inverter board I, I believe and there is one board under it so I'll probably turn everything on the side like so We can remove some boards and take a closer look on them. But overall, unit is pretty busy inside, a lot of stuff. Very nice modular con construction, because essentially the same chassis used for uh, other models with uh, smaller power rating. I think they just populate less of the power components. So we can probably remove the bottom cover. I'm not sure if it's removable. Yeah, it looks like it's not. It's like a part of the actual uh, chassis frame. And you can see all the uh, cables, they are glued to the board. So there is no chance that anything will move. Very nice attention to detail. These are actually plastic screws. Let's remove them. Yeah, these are nylon screws because probably the heatsink that uh, this cover screwed to is under the live potential. Here is the cover. Wow, some big inductors. Very nice. You can see for the size comparison, here is my fingers. So these are like five centimeter or so in diameter. Some serious power over there. Oh. And that loose screw probably went out from one of the uh, posts from the board, I think. But all the screws, they are uh, everything is in place. So that's a mystery. There is no any damage marks, no burn parts. Everything looks nice and clean. So I think we can remove the uh, top uh, power board. 
and see what's in under it. So there is a cable that goes to the fan. So this is the fan power. Um, there are uh, two power boards with the power resistors that connect to the bottom board. There is a rectangular right angle connector here. And then the, some cables on the output. So we can remove the screws and try to get this board out. This board um, part number is 61504H. So this is indeed confirms that uh, this uh, instrument is using the same hardware as uh, 61500 series. It's probably uh, actually just a software uh, option to turn on and turn off the harmonic uh, uh, test uh, pulse generation function. So hopefully in future we can hack it and unlock the full functionality. That would be an interesting experiment. So I'll need to remove these two. And then hopefully the board will just get free from the connector and we can take it out. There is actually a thread on EV Block Forum. Uh, one of the owners of 61501 model, which is, uh, uh, I think, 300. This is an interesting board. With some 30 kilo ohm resistors, 10 watts each. It connects these two posts, plus and minus. So these are DC rails for each of the half. Uh, of the output uh, power stage. Uh, I think this, I'm not sure if this post are removable. I think they need to be removed as well. Yeah, the board holds by the post, so I'll have to get a screwdriver. bubble wrap around
Yeah, looks like so. I got muted, not not lost sound. The sound is back. Yeah, battery is fine. I think I just get muted. <laughs> I guess I should check the sound is back. Okay, cool. Was it out for long? Okay, sorry. I don't have the headphones to hear the sound back, so I guess I'll be getting that for the next video. All right. I was just describing some parts here. So big capacitors for seven, 470 microfarad, 450 volts. These are 560, 350, 105 uh, degrees uh, rating. These are posts that we were disconnecting from this board. Otherwise, it's very nice construction. A lot of, lot of high power stuff in here. Very cool. Also, I think these heat sinks have, they have two MOSFETs based on the labels on the PCB board each side. There is some current sense uh, shunts, uh, current transformers, some auxiliary uh, circuitry, and output, a big, big inductor at the output. And these are all the output uh, uh, terminal blocks. There are some film caps, 3.3 nanofarad. And these two are shunts used for measuring output current. These are Dale LV, LVR5. And uh, let me check what's the value for the shunt. It's hard to see. Uh, I'll have to turn the whole thing around. Nothing is uh, damaged, there is no burn marks, no, no any visual problems. And this board is also manufactured in 2009, based on this uh, ICT, this is the test label. The shunt is 20 milliohm, so these are uh, two connected in parallel, so this is essentially a 10 milliohm uh, output shunt. There are two fuses, uh, rated for 250 volts. Okay. So there is some protection there. The one fuse in here, one fuse in here. Very modular construction again. So it's if something go bad, probably can take out the whole module, replace it, and then have the unit quickly working again. And the fan, we can see the label on the fan, it's uh, NMB MUT model. Well, this is a big part number, no, uh, model number. It's uh, rated for 12 volts DC, 0 0.9 amps. It doesn't have uh, a PWM fan control. It have just only two wires, black and uh, and red. But I think it's actually controlled by the um, unit by changing the voltage. And then the this connector sticking out. This is from control board. I think we can remove that section as well and see what's in there. But before we do that. You can see there is interesting uh, option slot in here with a connector for it, but it's not populated. I don't know what goes in there. And this option is uh, interface uh, board. It has our usual national instruments, not 9914, uh, 
a GPIB interface. This is some programmable device. So an opto is isolated uh, uh, interconnection. Okay. And I can change the lens. We can take a look what chips are in here on the main processor board. It's also labeled 61504B. So I think all the hardware in this unit is the same as uh, full featured uh, 61500 series. Okay, let me change the lens. So we have some programmable device, and uh, this this one. Uh, it looks like a lattice, uh, uh, probably Gowler PAL chip for some glue logic. Some of the chips are socketed. These are LP07 precision amplifiers. There is a main uh, crystal oscillator, 8 megahertz. Some regulator glued on the heat sink. A lot of uh, test points for the various um, troubleshooting steps. Met the relay. I believe this is a relay. Yes, it is. There is another OP07. OP07. Now we can take a look on the main processor. That is essentially the brains of the instrument. Texas Instruments TMS320C203 in TQFP80 package. It have some resistor networks. And this is the oscillator for it. Then there are uh, of, uh, isolators, digital isolators, I think. AD7331. There are a whole three of them. You can guess that it's an optical isolator by looking at the PCB layout. There is a separated uh, uh, section without any copper. So there is no galvanic, galvanic connection between the all the digital stuff and uh, floating analog side. There are some HC245 registers, nicely glued connector, and I think that is the firmware chip with the uh, memory for the for for our TMS controller. It's interesting that this actual chip have the tape sticker over the version. I don't know, was the version very secret? I think it was version 1.34, maybe. So there you have it, as for the control board, and also this one have few of the program devices as well and I can take closer look on the bottom board 61504 bunch of film capacitors and also this connection uh, this connector and this uh, big uh, cable hints us that there is another board under the cage over there. Okay, that's the fan label. And then the 
board that we removed. That is the fan, fan headers for both of the fans. And this is LM399 and TLE208, 2082. This is, I think, just a fan controller. All right. Let's remove that uh, digital section and see what's under it. Ah, okay. Uh, so AD7331, uh, actually ADC and DEX, but uh, it's interesting that they look like uh, isolated uh, interface chips. Okay, my bad, those are ADC and DEX. So to remove whole, I think this whole frame removes. Yes, this is a separate metal piece. And there are actually exposed case points. I'm a little bit concerned where that uh, rock screw went from. Because so far everything is nicely tightened. There was no missing holes where that screw could come from. Okay, this whole, whole thing moves. I think I'll need to remove the option. I think it just slides out. It's an edge connector. Yep. There we go. Probably I should change the lens back. something holding on this side or oh, maybe it's the bottom connector over there and actually oh yeah I see there is a connector in here I need to cut this glue Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. I think I'll need to remove the board first. Because I need to lift it and slide it to the left. But I cannot do that with the whole frame. Yep, 
board is free. This is a four layer board from the looks of it. Nice layout. Now we can go ahead and remove the frame. This. Uh -huh. It's probably hold from the back a little bit. Or maybe have the board mounted on the other side of it as well. See if that helps. Yes. Oh, this whole thing is shielded. We'll take a look on that in a moment. But for now. whole exhibition of the power components in there. So we have again big uh, ceramic fuse from little fuse. There is some spider webs in there. That's all right. Again, no any damage, no any visual uh, problems. So we have big fuse in there. Again, model six one five zero four. Revision C have uh, some capacitors 22 nanofarad. These are uh, X1 CTX caps, it's one microfarad. These green ones, four of them. Input inductors, uh, big relays, 12 uh, volt form A. Uh, rated for 30 amps, 240 volts. Some power resistors. These are uh, 10 watts, 20. Uh, hard to see. It's 20 something, 200 or 200 ohms. Yeah, it's probably 200 ohms. So there are six of them. Then again, big uh, chokes. L301, L302, that's the part number, uh, rough dust on the board. Uh, this is the bridge uh, rectifier, I think. Yes, this is DB401. DB means diode bridge. And then there is, uh, I'm trying to find what's under this one. But there is only heatsink, HS301, RefDes, but doesn't say what active parts in there. So the diode bridge uh, heatsink is here, and this is the active devices. It's probably some part of the PFC. There are some control uh, circuits over there. Then I think that is low voltage regulator for all the digital power, like for the controller, ADCs, uh, analog uh, low, uh, low power rails, and some heatsink stuff with, uh, let me check. There is a test point, iSense. 
this is a LAM393 comparator, some trim pot, this actually I see is socketed, 450 volts, 220 microfarad uh, cap, another fuse over there. And then it connects to the main board through that bottom uh, switch, uh, uh, bottom connector, and uh, connector over here. And also on the side, there is a backlane board. That uh, connects to our top board. So, lots of goodies. I don't have much experience with the high power full bridge inverters and stuff like that to go over each of these details but I'll be definitely looking more into this in future and the fans are yes fans are the same and actually you can see the section of the fan on the right side is actually covered to avoid airflow going over the digital board maybe trying to prevent uh, excessive airflow over there not to let any ppms escape and yes for the simple uh, simple function how this works it converts uh, high power input uh, from mains into high voltage DC rail and then it uh, uh, through the isolated uh, assembly it's essentially the whole this thing I think what it's doing and then it convert uh, provides the converted uh, high voltage DC into generated uh, uh, inverter and uh, Two, two sides, uh, two sides of the output from that provided to the output to generate AC or actually DC. This unit is also capable to output high, high current DC voltages up to 420 volts, and with the currents up to 4 amps. So you can use this as a crude uh, high voltage DC supply. It's a very capable unit. And that explains also why it's usually even on the secondary market, on like eBay, it's usually cost many thousands of dollars, especially the high power model like this one. All right, I think uh, that's it for now. So we will take it uh, back together and make the cable and try to power it on and see what happens. But before we do that, I'm interested to see what's inside of this shielded box. So there are four screws. And hmm, they're actually covered by this insulation layer, which is kind of dirty. So I think we just need to remove these nuts and then we can take the cover off. Okay, I'll just wipe this the dust off. It 
this is not water, this is IPA, so, so it's fine. I'm more like smearing it, it all over the joint rather than cleaning. Hmm, I think I found our missing screw mystery. There is actually, I see it from here, a spot on the bottom power board that doesn't have a screw. And there are marks on the PCB that suggest screw should be there. So I think we can put that screw back in. Okay, there is not much to it. And yeah, I can probably just kind of show. There are some uh, optocouplers, some capacitors, some resistors there, some transistors. I don't think I'll be taking that board out. There is not much to it. No magic inside. It's a nice metal shield. Very thick, like one millimeter or so. Not very exciting, but we have to put everything like it was before. Also, we can blow some dust out. So the mystery screw was right there. You can barely see it, but it's right over there. Where that label is. So we'll put the screw back in there.
Tinch. Okay. Quite like this design, it's quite modular, easy to access parts, easy to access boards. This is the top, we don't screw this one. Let's put the, this board back in and there's a little tricky connector. Need to have it aligned correctly with the connector in here. So Looks like it's in place. Okay, let's put the option back.
It's a steel case, so it's a little bit tricky to align perfectly all the holes because it's all so big. like half a millimeter away yeah, there we go No, I didn't test the fuses. I have uh, my belief in that they will be okay. Or not. We'll find out soon enough. If I don't drop the screw right in there. Let's try not to do that. Okay, this part is done. Let's put the top board over there. Get these connectors in. Okay. So I can also show front panel part, it's not much in there, essentially we have the LCD over there, this is the controller board for front panel, and then the keyboard uh, PCB, and this is the encoder knob board, so not much to it. And then this angle is a little bit bent, corner. Uh, in the future I'll just remove the uh, front panel and make it flat again. So, nothing much in there. We will not be taking apart that, that section. So 
have to put those standoffs back. There is a question how it is how it is better than variac even an isolated variac well with a variac you cannot source dc voltages and also with variac you cannot limit the currents to any value you want even very low values in case if you want to test some device that you are not sure if it's uh, faulty or not the current limiting is very helpful to prevent uh, further damage both to your device and to the source so another thing that uh, you can do with this source is also generate non sine sine wave uh, signals so for example if you want to test your power supply for uh, uh, noise and for the ripple when it's uh, provided with non uh, sinusoidal uh, input uh, voltage for example you want to simulate very bad uh, mains um, and how the power supply would work uh, with a dirty input you can do this with this unit but you cannot do that with the variac because variac is a passive device it cannot change the shape or the frequency of your um, output and also with this unit you can program uh, output frequencies in the range from 15 Hz to 1000 Hz. So you can for example gener generate 400 uh, Hz uh, uh, mains power used for uh, aircrafts and uh, uh, ships and stuff like that. So if you're designing equipment for those applications um, you would need uh, some source like this to validate that they are still can be functional and working properly uh, with different frequencies. Back at EVGA I was using uh, 61504 unit to test power supplies uh, because the power supplies were sold in different countries like in Japan, in US, in Europe and all of those countries have different voltages so and also different frequencies. So you needed to guarantee that power, power supply can operate correctly with all those different uh, conditions. And this is tight enough. And also this unit pro provides uh, some power measurements uh, capabilities uh, so I can test uh, instead of getting the special uh, power analyzer I can just use the source and essentially get the same data okay this is a little bit interesting because it allows to you can to connect different points but I think it was like that and they are the same so this is just two resistors over these terminals probably to discharge the high voltage DC rail when you turn off the output Hmm. I think this one is over here. Yeah, it looks best like that way. Never seen anything like this before, so it's quite interesting.
this stuff is in place. Let's put the shield back in. But before we do that, we do want to put the screws back onto the board. Okay, everything is nice and tight. question is where did I put those nylon screws because I don't see them on the table oh there is one It's actually this uh, cover acts not just as a, a safety shield but also as an airflow uh, direction because you can you have the fan here it's blowing that way but there are these leaves on the side block the uh, air gap so the air will go through the heat sinks instead of going around them This, of course, probably will go like that, but probably like that is fine too. All right. So now we have everything back together. We will need to make a cable. As I said before, there is input terminal block. We will need to have standard mains cable that connects to this block on the unit side, and then standard uh, 15 amp uh, jack for the mains uh, outlet. I have just a suitable cable for that. This is AWG12 uh, 15 amp uh, extension cord. So I'll just chop it in half and we can use the main side to connect to the unit. And then this will be our output. We connect to the output terminals.
don't, don't have big enough. Uh, we need big enough cutter for that. Uh, I think this might work. It's not a right tool for the for the job, but it works. have to re rearrange the uh, layout a little bit so I can do the cable work I also need to find uh, uh, terminals uh, like a spade logs that can go in there but I have an idea where I can get that We can check our secret stash of nanovolt gear and probably we can find something suitable in here. This should be enough for a couple years. See if I have any, any another alternative. Yeah, there is no alternative for that. Oh. I 
we can chop some from this cable would be definitely better this is actually the cable from DC load which I don't have <laughs> Let me look some more. Maybe I can find some of the standard speed lock. It's always like that. It's quicker to buy a new stuff than find the old stuff that you know for sure that you already have. Yeah, after all I can do it uh, better next time, but for now we just want to see if it uh, actually works or not. So I'll just uh, crimp some of those copper ones. The only problem with them is that they are a little bit too wide, so they can't really go as easy into the connector, so we'll have to bend them a bit. And then for the output, we'll use the same stuff. I think I just need actually three. So we have line, neutral and ground. Not the right tool, but we'll do fine.
Ótimo. Wasting precious copper lugs on the power cable. And the battery in camera dead. But not to worry, we have a spare one. Okay, I think this is okay for temporary tests. They are not going anywhere. So have to get it connected. to be careful moving this thing around there is also a nice protection cover to avoid uh, random people putting fingers into the exposed uh, terminals so we have Line, neutral and ground. Let's get all that connected. So now you can see we need to do some trimming. I would not recommend to repeat this.
I'll just trim the sides. Just a little bit off. Let uh, that. Pretty much how you're doing. A good example how not to make the power cable. She'll be alright. Now, the question is which wire go where? We can do good old test. With our trusty Fluke 87. So our Earth I think it should be this one. Yep. Our neutral. Okay. So the cable goes up. Yay! One in, two more to go. Let's double check again. This is neutral. Last one. That's the line. Still need a little tree. Okay.
Okay, we are in. Let's double check. So line neutral, nothing. Line ground, nothing. Now let's check earth. Good. Now line. Good. Good. Let's put the cover back in. I think I should move it a little bit up. Yeah, this is will be better. Think we're ready to go. This is nice. But before we do that, there is a small trick because we need to connect the sense, sense neutral to neutral and sense line to line, because this is four wire connection. So if we power on like this, there will be open feedback and will be not very good. So we want to have a short between sense line, uh, sense line and sense uh, line, and then the neutral and sense neutral, and the uh, ground is ground. So let's put the shorts in there. This post a little bit bent, but that's okay, we can fix that later. So what I can do, I can just find the screws that can go in here and just put a jump wire. Uh, for the first power on, we don't need to connect any external device, just for the quick test, and then we can worry about that later. So the question is, what the screw size uh, these terminal blocks are? I have some hardware, which I can try. I think 632 is too small, but we can try that. Yes, yeah, 632 is definitely too small. It's probably one size bigger. Let's see. This is M5, I don't think it's M5, yeah, it's definitely too big. Yep. This is 1032. With their own head, and it's also too big. Yes, so it's pretty, 
by the elimination, I think it is 832. So let's see which 832 screws I have. Have eight thirty two nuts. But the screws. This one. Yeah, it kind of goes, but not really. And this one. This one is too big. This one will go, but this is definitely not the right screw. Two more. <laughs> Maybe. We have a chance. We have three screws. Just need one more. That might work. Let's see. Hmm. It doesn't start, but doesn't really go. It's probably metric size. these black screws nope hmm. 
Nope. Yeah, I don't want to do the <laughs> do the kind of self tapping screws. So Okay, I have some chance. Found four and other screws again. Yay! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. These are the screw from the isotope package current shunt. Nice. Now we can just connect the short. Can I do like that? Oh, I think I can. And finally we can power on. Hopefully see some invisible smokes. butchered it oh well I guess I can have a short trip to the Home Depot or something. Good enough for America. This video enter in the section, do not try this at home. How not to test 2000 volt amps AC source? Yeah, it's just getting out. I should just get the wire and put in there. This should be good enough.
this is actually will be real easy to hook the scope at the output so we can see the output waveforms all right i think we're ready to try it on So let's rearrange everything. We can get our GMM. Okay. So I'll just hook the clips of the DMM uh, to the output and then we can try to power on, see what happens and then program some voltages, see if there is output. Okay, DMM is connected. Let me get, yeah, now you can see it. Switch is off. Let me connect to the power. We are connected. And the moment of truth. Self test, please wait. There is no smoke. Output self-test. Now I remember that this display is very nice, not very good contrast. But it works. That is very good. And I can show the sequence again. Fans are actually really, really quiet, so it doesn't uh, run at full speed when there is no load. That is nice. Output self-test, okay, so no problems. Let's try to program some voltages now you can see dmm in the background let's try something low like 90 volts 60 hertz and output on and of course it would help if we switch the dmm to the ac voltage so we have 89.8 very nice, it works. Let's try 110 volts. 110. Let's try 150. 150, no problems. 220. 220 volts. 250. 250. 
so it works pretty good output off output on let's try frequency let's try go back 90 volts and I already forgot how to use this thing frequency I think yeah there are a lot of settings ranges we don't need that go back go back yeah. 50 hertz we have 50 hertz 60 60 try 400 hertz 400 hertz 1k too many digits 1 kilohertz 1 kilohertz so so far so good everything looks very nice and working let's see what settings we have there we have setup you can take a look so there is a range 150 or 300 this is output range VAC limit 300 volts VDC 424 and current limit 16 amps we can try configuration see what's there remote inhibit external voltage input couple IC amplifier or DC amplifier I believe we can see that so DC level control or AC amplifier you can try output so you have uh, coupling you can select let me zoom in so we can try DC output some DC voltages oh, go back so here is we have DC no AC voltage AC frequency settings anymore we can switch the DMM to DC voltage try to output let's say 90 volts so we have 90 volts on the DMM let's try 150 150 250 250 let's try 400 400 volts DC so so far so good no problems we can try to hook the scope on the output and see uh, the sine wave see how good it is and that would be all for this video i believe so let's connect the scope and see what we get on the scope also I, now i can put the cover back on i'm very happy with the outcome Just like I expected, there is there was nothing wrong with this unit, just uh, uh, missing power connection. So it was a score. Okay, I need to remove one screw. different way okay
and to connect the uh, scope to the output you cannot use just normal probe because normal single-ended probes they are grounded and essentially you will blow up your scope right away so for uh, stuff like this you would want to use isolated uh, differential probe and I have few of those, those probes suitable for the voltage range and for the test like this so just a reminder not to connect your usual uh, passive probes to high energy devices and power supplies like this source Alright, cover is back on. So while the uh, scope is booting right in there in the background, I can show you the probe. So here is the probe that we will use in this test. This is Tektronix TMDP0200, 200 MHz high voltage differential probe, which is capable to input up to 700 volt uh, peak to peak, or CAT uh, 1550, CAT 3 300 volts at the input. So it connects to the Tektronix uh, DPO series uh, Tech VPI interface and uh, provide uh, isolated uh, input with the nice uh, uh, Fluke uh, hooks. So we can connect all that. Configure the scope. Okay, now we can connect uh, to the output. And I can zoom on the screen. Stop a bit. There is our scope. Okay, should be good enough. Hopefully the picture is clear enough. Let me clear the measurements. Probably. I just want to see RMS and peak to peak uh, and frequency. So we trigger on channel 4, 100 volts per division. Let's turn 
source up. Output self test. So we can program 90 volts, 60 hertz, and there is our output. Those spikes actually not from the source, I think, but let's check. Hmm. Yeah, this is stuff from the scope, because this scope is not really fully functioning. It's one of my test scopes that I use for experiments and have broken acquisition board. So let's try channel, channel 3. It might be better. another project for the future time let's try output on yep that was not from the chroma uh, source it's actually from the scope yeah so we can see the sine wave pretty nice we can try different frequency, let's say 90 volt, let's try 50 hertz, there's our 50 hertz sine wave. Let's try 40 hertz, 20, okay, let's see the measurements, clear, RMS, peak to peak, frequency, yep. 20 hertz. Let's try 1 kilohertz. There is our 1 kilohertz. So, all good, all working fine. Let me show you. I think that's it for today thank you everybody for watching and see you in another video bye